Dear brothers and sisters, our catechesis today focuses on Gertrude the Great, a remarkable figure associated with the Monastery of Helfta, where so many masterpieces of religious literature were born. St. Gertrude is the only woman in Germany destined to be called great, an honor due to her exceptional natural and supernatural gifts. Gertrude uh, was a nun at the Cistercian Monastery of Helfte uh, in the 13th century. Um, she was incapacitated for much of her adult life through severe illness. Um, she had a series of revelations. I was 25 years old. It was the Monday before the Feast of the Purification of Mary, the Lord's Most Chaste Mother, which fell on the 27th of January that year. After Compline, as dusk began, I was standing in the middle of the dormitory. On meeting an elder sister, according to the custom of our order, I bowed my head. As I raised it, I saw standing there beside me a young man. He was lovely and refined and looked about 16. His appearance was such as my youth would find pleasing. With kindly face and gentle words, he said to me, Your salvation will come quickly. Why are you consumed by sadness? Do you have no counselor that sorrow has overwhelmed you? I shall free you, and I shall deliver you. Do not fear. On Easter Monday, at the Eucharist, Gertrude, or here, a good, pious person, asks the Lord to co complete through the highest sacrament whatever she neglected to do in her religious life. At this, Christ presents her to God in a specially adorned dress. The composition of the dress is described in detail. It is composed of as many parts as Gertrude has, has spent years in the nunnery. Words and deeds at each moment and the intention in which they have been uttered or committed are distinctly visible in the dress. Gertrude is worried to see some gems are loosely attached. These gems stand for deeds committed with an ulterior motive or not in earnest devotion. Whenever Gadra just was praying without thinking about the prayer, she was just doing that prayer wheel thing. So she's worried about those gems falling off. Christ then covers the dress with a golden plate or metal, making it entirely transparent. It's transparent like a very clear, very clean uh, crystal. Everything shines even brighter and more colorful in the dress, including the sins which glorify God. That's a quote. Among all these pleasures, I have two favorites, that you imprinted on my heart the brilliant necklace of your most saving wounds, and that you fixed the wound of love so plainly and so effectually in my heart. You also bestowed on me the added intimacy of your priceless friendship by offering in so many different ways that most noble ark of Godhead, your deified heart, to increase all my delights, sometimes giving it freely, sometimes as a greater sign of our mutual intimacy, exchanging it for mine. She's a kind of interesting combination of um, what's expected and expected of her time and what perhaps is highly individual. She cares a great deal about, as a woman of her time would, about fine attire, about ornamentation. Uh, Jesus shows up in her revelations very often wearing a fine gown, a yellow robe decorated with flowers or with uh, jewels. And she's very taken with the language of empire. So he is emperor, uh, and Mary is uh, empress. And so, so she's very, very much a woman of her time and her place. She's not at all unusual in that regard. But perhaps because of her own physical situation, her illness, um, and her frequent inability to conform to what are, what's expected of her in the monastery, um, she is, on the one hand, much more committed to passion and desire than to rote observance. 
On the other hand, she never dismisses rote behavior. It's better to do things because you're supposed to than not to do them. But the flip side of that is because she so often cannot attend mass or she's in the office but is too weak to stand up, she's constantly saying in her revelations, saying to Jesus um, or to the saints, I'm so sorry that I can't come to mass all the time. I'm so sorry that I'm too sick to, to be present. I'm so sorry that I'm too weak to stand up and to do what I ought to do. And sometimes Jesus says, um, I'll give you the strength to do it. From here on, you won't have any trouble standing up during the office. But more often, he says, that's all right. I give you more credit because you desire to serve me. For me, St. Gertrude is a, a model of monastic life because she transformed uh, all her humanity in a way that um, made her a, a wise woman, a woman that can discern the, the, the work of God in, in another person. So uh, she, the, her, um, her fecundity in monastic life and her uh, f femininity uh, were um, fully, um, fully performed, but not for herself, but for the service of God. So